There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance. And until you change that, you're gonna be bumbling around, bumping into each other. You don't even recognize half the weapons that they use against you. And some of them seem so insignificant that you don't even try. You don't even try. That's why you're losing the war. And don't tell me you're not. You don't even try. Over the last 50 years, the population has been saturated with a huge intertwining web of meaningless conspiracy theories that could almost all be true, but almost never are. And if someone is to suddenly see the big picture of what is really going on, and seriously tries to alert people to the truth, then the public has been carefully trained to view them as a crackpot, or to label them as another conspiracy theorist. It's been very cleverly orchestrated so that no one ever discovers the whole truth about anything or sees the creeping malaise as it slowly spreads. No one ever notices the one hidden agenda, the one real truth that underlies all the others. And if anyone ever does figure it out, they are ridiculed or silenced. But now, due to the growth of the internet, it has become a lot harder to silence people and to keep information contained. Always remember, there are many methods in play to prevent you from awakening, and many red herrings are laid along the path, each one appearing to be possible as the perfect answer to your questions. One of the two main tools used to keep you in a state of confusion without you knowing it is the fluoride in your toothpaste and water supplies. There are also many other chemicals that are added to processed foods to decrease your awareness and prevent your longevity. I implore you all to buy non-fluoride dental products and drink only water that you know is fresh. It's true that calcium fluoride is an organically occurring compound and harmless in small doses. But the sodium fluoride that is used in dental products and water supplies is a toxic waste. It is a byproduct of aluminium production and it does not prevent tooth decay. It inhibits brain function and promotes docility in the subject. Very notably, Fluoride was first used by the Russians in mind control experiments conducted on prisoners in the gulags and later by Nazis in the death camps. It was well noted by both groups that prisoners who drank fluoridated water were much more docile and easier to control than other prisoners. Fluoride compounds are also the active ingredients in most antidepressant drugs such as Prozac, clearly demonstrating its ability to reduce aggression and motivation in people. It has absolutely no biological or health benefits at all, and it does nothing whatsoever to prevent tooth decay. In fact, it causes dental fluorosis, yellowing of the teeth, and pitting of the enamel. If you seriously think fluoride actually does have some health benefits, the next time you're out shopping, I challenge you to pick up a packet of any brand of rat poison you care to name and look at what it contains. Quite often you'll find that there is only one ingredient, sodium fluoride. It has also been very well noted that a person under the influence of such a chemical is always completely oblivious to the fact. And the ability of fluoride to do this is not some internet myth as many would claim or have you believe. It is the absolute truth. Yet even now, and despite the clear results shown in the latest fluoride studies, as more people begin to awaken and begin to question the situation the world is in, the more governments are seeking to combat this awakening by undertaking the increased fluoridation of their water supplies, touting dental health as the reason, and nothing could be further from the truth. The second, and perhaps the most important tool that is used to keep people in check and prevent them from ever becoming truly aware, is television. Television is the greatest and most all-pervasive hypnotist and propaganda tool ever conceived. TV teaches people what to think, but not how to think, and TV has given modern humans an utterly false perception of society, of the world, and of each other. Through TV, the power elite have succeeded in creating a distracted, misinformed, divided, and class-driven society suffering historical amnesia and completely oblivious to the true realities of their surroundings. And all of these people view themselves as truly informed and are very quick to berate and ridicule anyone who offers them an alternate perspective. Subsequently, 
Through the ideas put into their heads by TV and through a TV-driven obsession with the collecting of meaningless trinkets, fashions and possessions that the TV tells them defines who they are as people, the power elite have also managed to rob most of the common man of their wealth, their lands, their skills, their education and their history. But most importantly, it has robbed people of their ability to think critically and objectively. And that is exactly what television was designed to do and exactly why it was invented. Every television set is also specifically designed to emit alpha waves. These can be clearly seen as a series of horizontal lines that run across the screen from top to bottom at regular intervals when using a camera to film an operating TV set, but they cannot be detected by the naked eye. These regular lines are not simply a normal part of the functioning of your picture tube. They are there for a particular reason, and they travel across the screen at a predetermined and very specific pace. How often have you seen someone sit at a TV and say, I don't like this program, and yet they sit there and watch it anyway? How often have you done it yourself? It is because of these horizontal lines that they to generate these hypnotic alpha waves. Alpha waves place you into a trance-like state as you are told what to think by scripted newsreaders. They're told what to buy, what to wear, where to go, and always kept otherwise distracted by sport, meaningless celebrity gossip, and a barrage of sex and entertainment, nowadays ever more frequently punctuated by messages of fear and warnings of imminent terror. These alpha waves produced by your TV set affect your electrical field even if you are not watching it the TV merely has to be on. They become addictive as your body becomes used to the energy field and many people would simply feel unable to cope without the daily fix of their favourite TV show. Then this hypnotic state carries on throughout the day as people work robot-like at their given tasks, usually discussing whatever the television taught them with their co-workers. Often people think they are discussing their own thoughts, but when the conversation is really analysed, it's usually not. It's about what show they watched last night, or sport, or something they learned from the Discovery Channel, their feelings towards the opposite sex, or perhaps something like the war on terror. And whether they realise it or not, what they are talking about, and 98% of what they think they know about anything at all, has been taught to them by the television, or by print media that is wholly owned and controlled by the very same six people who own all the TV stations. That's right, six people. Sixty years ago, the media in the Western world was run by 86 small corporations who all competed to deliver the best and most informative news. Today, it is run as a well-oiled, very streamlined and tightly controlled machine by just six who now control all major Western mainstream television and print media. And with the current rate of corporate growth, that number is set to soon drop to three. This has set an extremely dangerous precedent, as it means that all televised and mainstream print media is now controlled by very, very few people. For a better and more informed perspective, obtain your news online from one of the many emerging independent websites, and go to many sites from different countries and sources to compare the same story from a variety of perspectives. You have been told that the internet is an unreliable source of information, and it is true that there are many bogus websites. But there is also a lot of very reliable information from very reliable sources, if you look in the right places. And remember, the ones who are telling you the thousands of independent websites who have opposing views to the mainstream shouldn't be trusted, number only six. It is just that it is those six who control all major media. So those six are able to control most of what information gets to the general public, and how such information is presented. It must also be duly considered that all of these six media corporations have extremely close ties to major financial institutions and arms manufacturers. Such a conflict of interest immediately poses huge questions regarding the objectivity and reliability of any information presented by these organisations. And if that were not bad enough, each one of these six corporations gets their news from only one of two sources. Reuters or the Associated Press. These two organisations serve as an international news pool and channel all information down to the networks. Only Reuters actually owns the Associated Press and Reuters itself is wholly owned by the Rothschilds. 
This is why there is never any negative press about the World Bank or the international banking cartels reported to the people by the mainstream media. It is why the majority of people have no idea about Codex Alimentarius or the real effects of fluoride and simply do not know how the world and its corrupt money system is really run. There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance and until you change that you'll be bumbling around, bumping into each other, saying and doing the wrong things, not understanding the nature of your enemy and if you don't understand the nature of your enemy and the weapons they use, you cannot fight that enemy. You can't fight the battle. You shouldn't even be on the battlefield. That's why you're losing the war.